Who did Ivan Tony score against? Azmir, do you know? Nottingham Forest? Yeah. Yeah. Did, you, did they tell you that outside? No, man. I'm you a bit of that. a football encyclopedia. That's My knowledge is incredible. Good. Can we have a job? Thank you, boys. <laughs> yeah. Do, you, do swap? you mind swapping yeah, seats yeah, with Gabby, swap, please? Swap. I know. Yeah, that, that's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> what are you I mean, doing on me, Talk Give me a couple of years. No, no, give me a couple of no, years. No, what are you doing on Talk Sport? Asmir, by the way, you look in incredible shape, by the way. Thank you. Very kind of you. He's ready to go now. He's in incredible shape. I've just got some of your stats here. I've got to read them out because, you know, when certain people come into the Talk Sport studios, you should read out. Some stats here. 265 Premier League appearances, 64 uh, clean sheets. Won the Premier League with Chelsea back in 16-17. Uh, FA, FA Cup runner-up, 16-17. 63 caps for Bosnia as well. Um, am I right? Canadian under-20 player of the year, way yes. back when. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Way back that, when. Yeah. Bosnia player of the year, 2012. Very good memory. See, I, I, I like that. See, I didn't even look you. down. See, I'm I'll come back down. again. What an intro. <laughs> come, back again. come back again. How are you though? How's things? I'm doing good. Really enjoying my summer. Obviously, yeah. it's been a bit of a longer summer, uh, which has been really nice. Nice mm -hmm. to catch up with the family, travel a little bit, and obviously now uh, training, getting mm -hmm. ready for the next challenge. Yeah. I, was, I wanted to ask you, how's the body? You know, 37 now. Gabby, honestly, how do you feel? feel good as gold. Good. Yeah, I've been really lucky with my career with injuries. So nothing, no major injuries. Um, you know, I take care of my body. I think these days, you know, we, yes. we have sports science, so that helps you a lot more. I think there's so many more ways to keep in shape and look after your body. And I've taken full advantage of that. So played every game last year. Yes. And uh, yeah, I want to keep this thing going for, for a couple how, more years. How, how was that last year then? Because it was a bit scary at times, wasn't it? For, for, for Queen's Park Rangers. Then to finally yeah. like survive as well. It was a rocky season, wasn't it? Definitely a season of two halves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I think the first half was not enjoyable one bit. Obviously, we dug ourselves a hole and mm. um, had to get out of there. And obviously, once the manager changed, we were we were a good team. Obviously, we always had the players. I think there was always confidence in the squad that we could stay up. And we weren't as bad as the first half of the season suggested. So, um, yeah, we were really good. The new manager, I think, from the day he took over to the end of the season, we were ninth. And saying that, we still probably threw away a couple of games. So, actually, we were a decent side, and that was a lot more enjoyable. Yeah. What's it like now when when you do look for a new club? Obviously, when you're a younger goalkeeper, you pretty much just pack your bags and go anywhere. Obviously, now as a family man, I guess you want to maybe stay everyone closer to home. But how far are you casting that net? Would you go sort of deep into Europe or is it trying to find a club sort of in England? Well, I think there's probably two parts to that. I think that's a really, really great question, uh, what you said there. And I think, of course, you travel anywhere around the world if it's really the right opportunity mm -hmm. and it's something you can't say no to, whether it's a massive club or whatever the reason may be. And, uh, but at the same time, yeah, I am 37 and I'm not probably the most important uh, person in my family. You know, I've got an <laughs> eldest daughter who's going, you know, into her GCSEs next year and, um, you know, a younger daughter would like to see my wife and everyone. So when you're on your own or away from home, it, it can be really difficult. And I think you get to a stage and I think Gabby, you've probably been there as well where, yeah, it's not all about you. Mm. Uh, as you rightly say, when you're younger, I've dragged my family all over yes. <laughs> all over England or Europe and when they're settled. Yeah. But when they're settled it's a little bit it's You're going on your own, difficult. aren't you? You're going on your Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> See you later, Dad. At, at, at this stage, yeah, exactly. I mean my family's been so supportive and yes. travel with me all over for many years, but I think there comes a point where you have to be a little bit more selective for sure. Was there a part of you in that QPR run where you just reminded others but yourself as well that you are a number one goalkeeper? Because sometimes hope so. you can yeah. sort of fall into that being a second goalkeeper. Yes. But you kind of obviously playing week in, week out for QPR. Did you remind yourself that you still are very, very much at your highest level still? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was one of the reasons I went there was to, to play every week. Mm -hmm. um, I hadn't done that so much in a couple of years before that. And I missed the buzz. I missed playing. I still felt like I could do it. I was physically feeling really, really good. So um, they gave me the opportunity, which was great. I really enjoyed that. And it was nice to remind myself and remind everyone I can still still play at a really high level and then uh, contribute in them whatever way possible. How hard can that be, though, for goalkeepers? Because if we look at, like, Ramsdale, for example, you know, um, losing his place to Raya. And goalkeepers I played with, you know, we had um, Brad Guzan, who was, like, under Brad Friedel. It's hard, isn't it? Because outfield players like myself, wing girl, striker, you're going to come on after 60 or you do well, you start next game. Goalkeepers, you just, like... If you're number two, you're number it's got to be a really, really bad run of form, hasn't it, for a keeper to get replaced? I think especially when in the when you're in the prime of your career, like like Aaron will be now, and mm. I've been there when I was at Chelsea for a couple of years. There's only a certain shelf life for that because they're too good not to play. And and you know, as you rightly say, unless something happens, which you don't wish on anyone, you no. don't get that opportunity. So you can do it for a certain amount of time, and then you're gonna have to go because otherwise you're gonna waste a year, two of your best years of your whole career not playing. And I think it 
it can be difficult. I think there's different stages. Obviously, when I was younger, you're working your way up, so you can kind of bite that bullet. Now, when you get a little bit older, you're like, okay, well, maybe um, I can do it for a different way and contribute in the, in the dress room, use your leadership, whatever it may be. So, but when you're in that prime, it's it's very difficult to do for a long is, time. Is that how you're feeling now as well? Because last season, you know, 45 games for um, QPR, you said yourself your body feels totally fine. Is that where you're at now this season? You want to go somewhere where you're number one? You don't mean like... Yeah, ideally, yes. Ideally, yes. I still feel like I can play, contribute. Mm -hmm. um, I've always had that mentality of a number one. But if it's, if it's a number two or three in the right situation, if it's for the greater good of the team, then of course you always look at that. Listen, some of the bigger clubs... I've been at and you know it's always been maybe a number two role and not playing as much but still being part of a team that's super successful contributing in a different yes. way it's still a pretty special experience because winning that league in 2017 um those guys and when you're not playing and I'm okay I'm not playing so like I'm I'm upset but I look to my left and there's like John Terry and there's like Seth Fabregas yes. and those guys if they're not complaining and what am I gonna say so there's still different ways to contribute but ultimately, when you do lift a trophy, no matter what, it's it's such a special feeling. Yeah. What was it like at Chelsea around that time? Obviously, you look at Chelsea now; it's, it feels like it feels like a completely different club. And when you say the names you just mentioned there, John Terry, Cesc Fabregas, I mean, you're talking sort of legends. What was it like walking into that changing room with that kind of collective of players? Yeah, initially it was a big step. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I went from Stoke to Chelsea, so it's it's a big step. Not only that, and obviously we had Mourinho as the manager, so it's big name after big name and you're trying to make your make your name for yourself within that team and establish there but I was at a good age and I've always been a big character so I'm always um, quite easily you know fitting into dress rooms or mm -hmm. making making my um, my voice heard and things like that so but they were super welcoming so that made it, made it really easy and then just the common goal of winning I mean the owner at that, that time Roman obviously Marina she was running the the show on a day-to-day -day basis and you know win at any cost that that yeah. was the thing there was no other questions asked we need to win we want to win personal egos leave them at the door and uh this club is to be one of the best clubs in the world and we want to win every single trophy we're in so that was something that was pretty special to be a part of yeah i can imagine the manager as well so Mourinho was there conte was there as yes. well rafa benitez yep. was there so you've, you, that's all that's three big managers big, big. of the three who kind of just made an impression on you the most would it be Mourinho? maybe yeah, I mean, he came at a bit of a difficult time. Obviously, mm. it was only a few months with Mourinho. I mean, Conte was relentless. Firm. Just <laughs> relentless. In what, way? What, what, what way? Just everything, his intensity every <laughs> yeah. single day. Uh, training <laughs> training was, was tough. I yeah. mean, um, the intensity. But then that carried into the games. You yeah. know, yeah. The, to win a game in training was, was an achievement. Wow. And then we just carry that into Saturday. I think we won 13 games in a row once and... The boys, the, the standards that we set, and like I said, some of those senior players, you know, you wouldn't accept anything, any moaning, any little detail. If you didn't bring your A game every single day, it was a problem. And that's what Conte also did. And he, it, it was just unbelievable, the standard that he set and his intensity, his fitness. I was so glad I was a goalkeeper. Honestly. <laughs> I've seen some of the running oh, that the Spurs players were doing goodness. on the preseason tour, and they all collapsed on the floor from the running. It was something crazy. We had a week at Austria. Okay? I, mean, I was looking at it, and we were in a different pitch doing the goalkeeper. And I said, "Oh, thank you, the Lord," you know, because I was looking over, and you know, that, but that paid off in the end. Paid off yeah, in the end. Yes. And listen, I played on the other managers, Tony Pulis, Sean Dyche. So say the same thing. You put that work in yes. overseas, and it will pay you back. And you know, you know, Conte was no different. All right, stick with us. Asmir Begovic is in the studio. Get your questions in for him as well. Text us 81089. Give us a call 03717 Loads more to come after this. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.